So let's do a little scene cleanup before we actually start dropping in our textures from Substance Painter. So you can see over here in the outliner, I've gone in and I've cleaned out any extra uh, geometry uh, in the scene. So all I'm left with is my low poly model right here and my high poly right here. So those are the only objects you should have in your scene. So if you have anything else extra, make sure you clean it. Also put everything in a group. So pretty much everything you had to do to export it correctly for FBX should be roughly the same format that you have here. So again, clean up your scene, make sure it's all uh, ready to go. Um, now for us to bring the textures back into Maya, what we need to do is we don't need the high poly showing anymore. So two ways you can do this to hide and to uh, kind of hide this is to go to the high poly group and then just hold Control H to hide it. Uh, and if but if you ever want to bring it back, you can do Shift H, or you can make a display layer and put it in there. So if you select the group, come down to where it says Display and click on this icon at the end it will make a new layer and assign that object into that new layer right here and if you just hit the v key for visibility it makes it disappear so there's a couple ways of doing that uh, and then over here if you click on the layer itself and double click uh, it will give you a new name and you just call this maybe um, hp for high poly and save that out perfect so now we can hide that we don't need that but I do want to see that when I go back through the scene, the high poly, to make sure you're doing everything correctly and saving the project and did a good job on your high poly. Uh, now let's go back to the low poly. We'll select that and now move that back and zero that out. So it's back in the wall. And this is where we're going to put the textures back onto is this low poly right here. Next thing we need to do is start. Um, looking at our hypershade. Our hypershade is basically the place where we make all the textures and see all the textures that we have or the different shaders we have. So if we come up to the top you'll see it's this little sphere with a hole in it. If you click on it we get the hypershade and over here we've got a materials list and these are all the materials you've made inside of Maya so when you went in there and did the different color coding for the material IDs and the texture sets, this is where all this sit, it, all this stuff is residing. And again, you can kind of click on the interface and kind of move it around. You can even come up to the top and change the uh, display size for each icon. So it's really cool to see all that. Um, what the most important thing I want to do is do a little bit of cleanup. So you might have made extra shaders that are not assigned to any piece of geometry and if you have you need to do a little house cleaning because we're going to be adding some more shaders in here. So we don't want a big huge um, basically a huge st structure here with unused color nodes. Uh, we want to get rid of that. So if we go up to the top here uh, and go to edit and say delete unused nodes that will go through and kind of do a little cleanup it looks like I only had one extra that wasn't being used for anything so I went in there found any no color nodes that weren't attached to any geometry and cleaned it out perfect that's what we want now here comes the more difficult part to make PBR work inside of mental ray and Maya we actually have to use a custom shader. So default mental ray does not render the textures out properly or the, any of the shaders inside of mental ray. We actually have to do some custom work. Now it gets a little lengthy and a little um, complicated on how to do that. So what we're going to use is a custom shading network made for PBR. Now I'm not going to specifically go over how I um, connected everything together. I'll briefly go over 
about how the shading network was built and how to plug things into it but I'm not going to go in there and, and and actually say oh we're doing this because of this in in any specific terms because that's honestly a topic for a more advanced digital lighting and texturing class that I normally teach uh, in the fall so if you want to get into more custom shading networks inside of Maya you would take that class uh, so this time around I'm going to basically show you where where the shading network is how do you plug that into Maya and how do you plug in the texture maps to get good results from your textures from substance painter into mental ray to render correctly so let's um, go to the learning module for the class so let me bring that up so if you go into the learning module and go to uh, that segment of the class and scroll down and right here you'll go to PBR mental ray setup click in here now <clears throat> For the network to be built, I went and did some research because there wasn't a lot of information on how to do this. So there is a forum that I put up here at the top talking about, you know, how to build the network. And you can see how this guy went through and kind of was trying to get what what Substance Painter was making and how to get that to look correctly inside of Mental Ray. So you can see his process and how he was using um, a custom shader to build and this is kind of the result he got he's this is what it looks in substance painter and this is what it looks like in mental ray now substance painter looks a little bit sharper a little bit cleaner where mental ray looks a little bit more blurry uh, reflections so the reflections look here pretty tight here a little blurry and there is going to be a little bit of loss can't nail it down exactly what you see in painter is going to be what you see in mental ray but it's pretty darn close and it, the results are pretty pretty accurate uh, using this shader so again these are all the settings and then this is the overall network that gets built if you follow all the directions and all that so I've gone through and I've already built all this up and if you guys want to get more advanced with this um, Definitely take my more advanced classes and we'll go over uh, a few more of these uh, networks and how to connect everything together. Um, again, I might go over a few aspects of this, but understand that, you know, it gets pretty complex pre pretty quick and I didn't want to get in, dive into it too much. Um, I will go over a little bit of Mila materials because that's what this goes over um, and how to use it, which is the new shading network. Uh, or shader inside of uh, Maya nowadays so alright let's go back to um, the learning module and what we want to do is we want to grab where it says download custom PBR Mila mental ray shader we want to click on that and download it so there it is you will download this onto your uh, scenes directory in your Maya project folder so wherever that resides for you there we are and there you go and then you drop it in there so there it is for me right there all right so save that out and then let's go back into the hypershade <clears throat> 